Ladies and gentlemen, welcome back to the Shirtless Plantain Show. It's your host, Totson, alongside Dean and Coach. Fellas, how you doing? Bonjour. Hola. <laughs> Como esta? <laughs> Listen. I thought he was French. <laughs> You're not French, <laughs> nigga. Sacre bleu. Sacre bleu, nigga. <laughs> Ain't no sacre bleu, nigga. Croissants. <laughs> les rojas. Croissants. Uh, 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 using Spanish. <laughs> Uh, frog legs, uh, uh, baguette, uh, uh, <laughs> du fromage. Yeah, omelette du fromage. <laughs> Jamali, Le Pen. <laughs> Say no, all sorts no. of shit. Man. Man. Where do we even start? Where do we even start with this game? I'm just trying to think of like, where do we even start from this game? I mean, Dean, I want you to just take it away. Talk to me. Like, we obviously saw Mbappe. You know, across the La Mina Mound, everything went pear shaped after that for France. Uh, yeah, I want to start with the grievous act of racism that went unpunished in this game when Nacho fouled Colomuani, then fell on him and shoved his face into the turf. And there was no yellow, there was no conversation, as far as I could tell. This nigga just got away scot free with a hate crime in the view of the entire world. And the, and the conversation say okay? shit. Up until that point, I was low key rooting for Spain, and I was like, "Nah, man, we can't have this." this that, that was fascism, live, fascism live. Like Mary Le Pen paid that nigga to fuck a nigga up on live television. But thankfully, thankfully, France responded well, and Colomani scored up. I guess France's only open play goal in this whole tournament, really. You know, so um, I actually had a feeling he was going to score. I just felt like the, comp, the the lineup that Deschamps put out, you know, given the like, we can criticize the champs at work. I know we're going to criticize him a bunch as we go through this pod. But given the limited, it's kind of like the whole Southgate thing with not having an extra left back. It's like, given the limitations, you know this manager places on his team and on himself. This, to me, was the best lineup he could have put up, personally. Because Turam wasn't really showing us much in his time on the field. Uh, Antoine Griezmann is one of Deschamps' most trusted lieutenants. Essentially, the captain without the armband, now that Mbappe has it. But he hasn't been good in this tournament either. So, given that, the only concern in my mind was, what is the front three? Dembele was good in the last game. Even though he came off the bench, he had to play. Uh, Mbappe, of course. And Colomani, you know, as a body that's going to be physical with the Spanish central defenders, I thought he did a decent enough job. And, I, you know, he obviously scored the goal. So, that was validated. But, like you said, things went pure shape pretty quickly after that. Yeah. Coach, what do you think about the goal and, like, everything before, you know, Spain decided to... Uh... Honestly speaking, yeah, I just... I don't. I, I hate giving attention to bullshit that, that doesn't pertain to the football. But Nacho really went full American History X, and it doesn't sit right with me. And the fact that nobody, like Rio Ferdinand on our broadcast, was talking about, yeah, you love that he's, he's giving him, he's giving him a bit of a facial there. Like he literally said that. Like he's in, like he's encouraged that behavior. Like it's somehow some sort of game that like he's got into his head. That was just that would to me, yeah, and I feel I feel that like optics are important. That it just it, from a up from the optics, it just, look, it just looks bad, let alone the fact that it's just a terrible foul anyway. It just looks bad, kind of thing. And it, and it really, ve- it really, really vexed me, man. And then the fact that now you're getting all these racist pages on social media that are memeing it and that, you know, they, they're having a whale of a time with it. It's just, it's really annoying. And it's like, I've never rooted so hard against the team. Like, I was so invested in, in this game because, not because, oh, I love France, but it's like, I just need I need Spain Spain to lose, but France and Deschamps today, I think they showed the potential and the future of this France team in in patches. There was a bravery from them that was almost like we we accept that you know Spain are a good team, but we we're, we're probably better. We have to impose ourselves, and they started the game like that. Um, I think they were quicker to the ball initially. I think they were. I think they were sharper. I think they showed more confidence as well. Um, and you're looking at, I know we're going to talk about the shots, but you're looking at what, what, how they evolve after the shots. But I feel like the composition of this team is kind of like this first 11 that they played today. That's kind of, even if not for the same players, but it's the same profiles that they kind of need to build around, I think, going forward. 
I don't know, like, I don't know who else is potentially missing from there. Maybe Elise comes in for Dembele. Um, Barcola gets a couple, more, a couple, a year or two under his belt again at the top. You know, you move Mbappe into the middle, the midfield. Camavinga and Chiamini can really build a proper, proper partnership kind of thing. You know, I want to throw, throw a curveball here, but someone like Ray and Jerky can be the creative spark in midfield if he's not going to, you know, be the fat, the fat gene merchant that he, he's looking at he's going to be. And, you know, the defence is the defence. I'm sorry, like, Teo, Teo Hernandez is 26 and he's just fucking amazing. And they have their picks of whoever they want at centre-back and Jules Kunde is there already. So it's like, the team's pretty much there. That's how the next manager gets the best out of the attacking talent, I think. That was a very cute little soliloquy you did there. Yeah. What is this next manager shit? Does they say that he's going to quit? I think I think he goes he goes on his I think he goes on his terms to be honest, but I think they they probably look he's been there since Euro twenties Euro twenty twelve. Twelve. He's been there since twenty twelve. Yeah, you see what I'm saying? So it's like they, they the question mark will be there as a point I'm making. But more on the more on the actual game itself, Deschamps probably showed a face to him today that we we rarely we've rarely seen. I think the last one we saw something like similar to that was probably at the last Euros and they went out again to, to Switzerland. But you know, I feel like with better finishing, France probably put this game away. They legit do. They put this game away before Spain can get into the rhythm. And Spain getting into the rhythm is very annoying because they're fantastic, to be honest. So. Um, yeah. I mean, I Mr. Was, yeah, Go ahead, I was, was going to say, like, you know, a lot of the chatter, and naturally, I get it. I'm not naive mm-hmm. about why people don't like Deschamps. We all know mm-hmm. why. Okay, mm-hmm. with that amount of talent, that team should be playing differently. But every time he's tried to play that sexy shit, shit didn't go well for them. You know, you yeah. mentioned Switzerland in the last Euros. Then there was Argentina in the last World Cup as well. Even though I'm not necessarily sure he was trying to play sexy in that game. They just conceded three goals. You know, shit happens. Yeah. Uh, but I just, I resent that a lot of the same people that point to trophies, mm. point to wins, are the same ones complaining that, Deschamps doesn't play a certain style with the talent that he has. It's like, listen, you guys have excused tons of terrorist managers for years. Yeah. Why is it all of a why, why is it a problem when national team managers who just who have an excuse to play like this, mm. who don't have the players year round, who have to figure out combinations on the fly, if they choose to be more conservative and they win, I don't understand what the problem is. Like, I just I I have not enjoyed the criticism of Deschamps throughout this tournament. I mm. get it; they should play better. But at the end of the day, history is written by the winners. Yeah. And he's won I, a lot. And I, this is him in another semifinal. Mm-hmm. You, he, he, he doesn't leave on the basis of them not performing well enough. They, they've done it. If he wants to keep his job, he's done enough to keep his job. I just want to make that point. I don't and, want people to act as if Deschamps is some sort of bum that deserves to be replaced. Like, nah. If he wants to keep the job, he's keeping the job. But he should go. He should mm-hmm. definitely go. And I'm going to follow up on your point. Somebody said to our online timeline today that he failed as a man who underachieved. My nigga, do you, first and first and foremost, that 2010 World Cup, right? Even forget that, that 2002, we all know what France are, right? France has been a very melodramatic ass country, like on the pitch. They missed 94. Off and I'm going to go back. Too, my nigga, off the pitch. <laughs> yeah. Like 94 World Cup, they missed that shit. And it wasn't because like they weren't talented. Them niggas just always had beef, like always had beef. They didn't win their first World Cup until 98 because who their captain was, Deschamps. That's besides the point. 2002, they got knocked. I mean, 2001 Euros. 2002, they got knocked out. 06, they went to the, you know, Zidane did his shit. 2010, that's when we see the crescendo of all the Wahala. You remember when uh, Evra basically, like, made uh, yeah, Dominic? Yeah, he made Dom- Evra, Evra tapped into his true West African gene. He realized yeah. that at the end of the day, I'm going to lead a civil war. And yeah. Nelka got suspended for, like, uh, God knows amount, uh, mm-hmm. ungodly amount of games. So 2012, they bring in Deschamps. And what Deschamps has done since 2012 has really brought stability to France. I think it's the most stable I've ever seen France ever on the pitch, even off the pitch. Go ahead, go ahead. Do you, do you not know? I'm, I'm, I'm going to let you get back in, but in my lifetime, genuinely, in my lifetime, France have been the most consistently successful international team. Like, ge- like, like genuinely. Um, and... Period. It's, it's, I don't think it's even up for. I don't think it's up for discussion. We talk about two thousand and two. We talk about um, we talk about two thousand two is probably the lowest low point. Maybe twenty ten as well. But outside of that, ninety eight the winners, two thousand the winners, two thousand six finalists. 
Euro 2008, I've totally forgotten. 2004, it was quarter, it was semi-finals, wasn't it? 2004 for the Euros, if I remember correctly. 2008, it's, it's a, I'm actually forgetting right now. That was Spain. Um, I think France made it to the semis, if I remember correctly. I'm going to double check. 2010, we know the military coup, right? Military coup, should I, should I say. Um, Euro 2012, it was... The court well, France didn't even France didn't even make out the group in US thousand eight. They finished uh, yeah, with one go. point. Okay, cool. But then we look at from two thousand twelve onwards, right? Euro two thousand and sixteen, um, final twenty eighteen World Cup. They actually won it. Uh, twenty Euro twenty twenty date semi finals or final semi finals. No, it was around the sixteen because Switzerland never get past around the sixteen. Switzerland. That's there we go. It was Switzerland, right? And then this time around, two, um, sorry, two thousand and twenty-four. Obviously, it was the, it was the semi-finals kind of thing. The only other team in that time period that's had something close to that was probably Spain, and Spain had that crazy six-year run. But up before and bef- before and after that, they were dog shit. Let's be honest, they were just dog shit. shit. <laughs> Can that, I add to that point quickly? Can I say that point quickly? Go on. I remember Luis Enrique crying. There we go. There we go. Like, you know what I'm saying? Like, he lost to Tariba West, guys. Let's never forget that. Tariba West was great, but he lost to Tariba West. Yeah, let's just remember that. No, he didn't lose to Tariba West. He lost to Ulysses foot. That's no, what he, he lost. lost to. No, 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 no. Let's stay with the program. He lost to Tariba West. I know exactly <laughs> what I'm doing here. <laughs> right. But the, the simple fact is, you know, the point you're making with France is that France have had this stability, but despite the stability they've had, prior to, the, all the, prior to it anyway, they've, they've always been good. They've, they've always they've always been good, and I feel like Deschamps has actually solidified what it looks like when you can be when you can be good and stable. They're consistently making deep runs in international competitions, and he's consistently picking the best of the best. You know what I'm saying like I don't feel like anyone can object to any to all of to anyone that he's left out. Can anyone object to that? Whereas with England now, upon well, their talent, we're having we're having these debates every single time. You know what I'm saying? Yeah, I was gonna say he should have he should have done more to incorporate Benzema, but. There were a lot of reasons why that didn't work. We yeah, don't need to go into that. <laughs> yeah, that's not on the shops. That's on Benzema himself. You know, so. Yeah, exactly. And Valbuena being a snitch, but that's neither here nor there. Yeah, we don't get into this, man. Why are you snitching? Damn. We don't need to. We don't need to. We don't need to. Damn. But um, uh, being real. <laughs> yeah, but back to the game, though. Um, I don't understand how, the, you know, Deschamps is notorious for picking three defensive midfielders. So yeah. as much as people want to shit on Southgate, at least he's not doing that. Yeah, it's yeah. Just three defensive well, but... <laughs> when you see both of the goals that Spain scored in quick succession, really, and I know we're going to get in on that Yamal shit, or at least y'all going to get in on it. I'm trying to hate it. But I don't understand how you have three defensive midfielders and look at the area Spain scored from. It's right mm-hmm. in front of the defense. That's what the defensive midfielders are supposed to be defending. What happened? I don't understand. Hey, first, first of all, niggas call Chua many hot Chua. Niggas are so rude. Oh, so disrespectful. Disrespectful as shit. I don't think Aurelian played too well today. Him and Rabio did not play well at all. Yeah. Um, it's like too many was like very slow to the ball. And Rabio, like the less said the better, because I don't want his mom to come slide tackle me because I know she will. Mm-hmm. Um, but yeah, it was just looked very weird. Mm-hmm. And you know, Mr. Hustle three or four son just decided, you know what? I'm gonna try some shit. And mm-hmm. he tried some shit indeed. And that's one of them goals where you just have to put your hands up. There's nothing you could do about that shit because he's a 16 year old kid who just takes the ball and whacks it. And it's not like mm-hmm. if it's some shit goalkeeper, right? Mike Magnan is arguably a top five goalkeeper in the world, right? He's the best goalkeeper in this tournament. Okay. Yeah. yeah. And Mike couldn't get there. And mm-hmm. that's some shit. The second goal, however, was uh, I think it was off the back of Rabio or Chuameni. I can't remember that Danny almost slipped through. It was, it was, Ch- was Chuameni. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And. Again, to be honest, to be honest, though, I feel like I feel like both of Spain's goals were just genuinely fantastic. Both touches from Olmo is one of those ones where it's like you only do that if you're supremely technically gifted. You see what I'm saying? Like his body shape when he took his first touch, the fact that he's maybe to take it back onto his stronger foot in that tight area, kind of thing. It's it's one of those goals where you just you kind of have to hold your hands up to it. But on France and the defending of that, Chiumeni was was fine. You know, in terms of position, he was in front of Omo, he was defending, do you know what I mean? It was like, it was Saliba that, that obviously headed it out kind of thing. And Chiumeni was there to meet 
the oncoming midfielder, right? It's fine, but you can't really legislate for him doing the shit that he done. The touches were great, right? I don't but know, then... I'd, I'd almost rather he gave up a penalty there. Yeah, <laughs> no, I'm serious. I, I, I'm serious. I'm almost rather you give up a penalty there. You can't just let someone. Those are skills that we see at five aside. Yeah, like, people don't get away with that at the elite level that often, you know. So I guess you hold your hands up, like, you know, good job. But at the end of the day, if Jamal Musiala does that to me, yeah. I can live with it. Danny Omo with that fucking, you know, loading vampire face he has, like, nah, 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 fuck <laughs> that man, fuck that shit, man, like. Like no, that no, nigga, no, no, no. He, he, got, he got like 48 teeth, nigga. Like, show some pride and knock him over. Like, do something. Like, the shit was very anti black. I didn't, you know, it. you know, one thing about Danny Omo, we should have known Danny Omo was a weird guy because he left La Masia to go to Danimo Zagreb. Oh, well, man, 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 looking man. after your career. Barcelona's a stupid ass place. We gotta save Lamin Yamal from those assholes. <laughs> yeah, no, but what I'm saying is this it's just like out of all the teams in the world, this man decided to go to Danimo Zagreb, then Red Bull. And I'm like, you know what? This guy's got it. You got it, man. You got it, man. Yeah, because that, that is... There was a logic behind it. I think it was one of those things where, you know, and this is going into, like, the history of football and countries where football, I mean, it still matters, but, you know, the game has been hollowed out. Like, there used to be a time when teams like Danimo Zagreb won the European Cup, you know, and that's a team where, I mean, that's where Luka Modric was developed, you know, mm-hmm. and he thought to himself, I think when they sold him on that club, it was about, listen, we're Croatians and we fucking love playmakers. Come mm-hmm. here. And he went there and look at how his career is going. Like, it was a great decision for him, for sure. For sure. Yeah, for absolutely. Um, but yeah, let's talk about Mr. Hustle 304 son, man. Um, yeah. Lamin Le- Yamao is fucking phenomenal. Thanks. Yeah. I, know D- I know Dean wants to hate, but look, man, that shit don't make no sense. Yeah. Like, I'm, th- 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 and, and here's the thing. is like, the reason I brought it up is because you look at the juxtaposition, and we're going to bring up him later, but his decision making at 16 is so much better than Usman Dembele, who's nearly 30. Okay? Like, it... Usman Dembele is not smart. I'm sorry. He pissed me off today. And Lamine Yamal is just fantastic. I, 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 I'm I, sorry. That's, that's the only thing I got to say about that kid. Like his decision making is probably one of the best things I've seen about him, that he's like that young and that smart in the ball. So, you know, kid, is, kid has got it. I just hope Barcelona don't run him to the fucking ground like Dean was saying because... They, they will. They will because they're broke and they don't, have, they don't have anybody remotely close to carry the burden. For him in the in in their squads, but um, that little nigga gonna be at PSG in two seasons. Just watch. Probably, but um, but he's got okay. So his goal itself, right? I really love the fact that he, he done a thing where what strikers do, where they quote, well, it was a, it was just a fake basically, where you do one fake for the defender, and you actually go where you want to go, kind of thing. And some similar things to what strikers do, where they make one or two runs for the defender than the actual one they want for the ball, kind of thing. It was nice that he he moves, you know. Rabiot out essentially moved him out of the way so he can get his shot it was it was ridiculous but again you know when you're at the top level kind of thing it's so hard it's generally so hard to get close to these players because everything's happened so fast so fast let me your miles release right and this is the key thing whether he's shooting or whether he's crossing right his release is so fast you can't really time it you can't really time where you want Unless you already touched tight to him, and even then you're making a mistake because he can turn you as well. But unless you touch, touch tight to him, when he wants to release for his short or his cross kind of thing, it happens so quickly that it's almost like, oh, why didn't he get out to him? But it's like, you can't react that fast because he's that good and he's that quick with it. So it's like that shot came at such a awkward time in terms of the way everybody's body position was for, um, for getting out to him. Whereas for him, it was a perfect time for him kind of thing. And I feel like, at a young age, he's already mastered the unbalancing of players to where he, he's unbalanced, you know. Now he's got all the time in the world to pick way what he wants to do with the ball. Does he want to pass it? Does he want to carry kind of running with it and stuff like that? This time he wanted to shoot and the shot itself was just... Honestly, if Messi did that, you know, we'd be like, we'd just be going nuts kind of thing. And, and I mean, your mile's done it. And hey, 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 gone. hey. When you get off this pod, go find yeah. the closest bar of soap to you and wash them out. Don't if oh messy. yeah, don't worry. Messi this is, is, this, this is the last thing. Man. This generally, this is the last nice thing I'm saying about Spain because please be respectful to him. Messi. I'm, I'm begging you, bro. <laughs> no, no, of course, of course. I'm, 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 I'm just, I'm just saying that semi final of a European Championship, or let's say whatever it's proper kind of thing. Your team's one nil down kind of thing, and against France or against the equivalent of France, South America kind of thing, and you do that. That's just ridiculous, but I feel like I've I feel like I've said too much nice things about Spain. I hope they fucking crash and burn, bro. One Bottom last thing. Heart. 
One last thing. It was so funny because the day before, Edge and Rabio was talking big and crazy about Lemmy in your mouth, and he does that on Edge and Rabio's. Yeah, head that, that, you know that's you, you know there's what do you call it? There's a lot of a lot of stories in football where you know unfortunate events happen before um after guys be talking shit like it just it happens. So so it goes like it, it's 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 interesting because uh, Lemmy in your mouth actually has priors doing mm. this at the youth level against Spain. I mean against France as well. Mm. I don't know if that was a final or a semifinal itself, but he scored a very similar goal at like the under seventeen level, uh, not mm. that long ago. You know? So, you know, the boys just built for it. I, I I really have nothing negative to say. I do get frustrated. I understand that it's really difficult once players have sort of mastered the art of unbalancing their opponent. Mm. But that moment really reminded me of uh, one of the very many visits that Arsenal made to the Allianz Arena. I think this was the stadium where this happened. Yeah, and, it is. And Francis Coquelin watched. Iron Robin. He jumped, jumped out like, of the bro, way. I, I will never not be mad about that shit. He, yeah. ju- like, he jumped out the way. It kind of felt like Rabio did something similar today, you yeah. know, so maybe maybe he was jumping to a fucking press conference to go talk shit or whatever. Why is it really what French guys jumping, man? Nah, <laughs> They're frog legs, innit? <laughs> <laughs> He's that ribbit. <laughs> One thing I did say, though, man, like, I'm glad that Bradley, Bradley Barcola showed himself. I know we call him a baby face, Ray, but he... His cameos in his in his Euros let me know this kid's gonna be this kid's gonna be alright. He's he's a, he's a solid player. I like Bradley Bacola. Um, try to think who else. Camavinga came on and did did solid. I don't know. You know, he should have came on a little bit earlier. He was but... the first. He was the first Rotten I saw that his first touch on his first touch, he looked up for Mbappe straight away. Like France played relatively well, but he literally looked up. He saw Mbappe. He's trying to make that pass every time, and I think the first, I think that his first significant action when he came on the camera bench, he put Mbappe through essentially, and then Mbappe put Hernandez through. And I think with, I think generally with France, this game in general, after Spain, after Spain got their two goals, so when when Spain were looking for their two goals, Spain are so so good, regardless of who is in the squad, kind of thing. They're really all are unselfish players. Like, I have to give it to them. And De La Fuente's got a, he's got them playing for each other. You know, we know that Nico Williams, who I don't think was that good today, but he was he was all right, I suppose. But we know that Nico Williams and Yamal are the the major threats. They're the ones that are platformed to perform in this team, like to make a difference for them. But everybody, including them, to work hard. And Nico Williams, when they didn't have the ball, he went into the four four two with with with, with Morata, kind of thing, and. When Spain were when when Spain were looking for the for their goals, you saw how unselfish his running was, how unselfish how selfish um, um Ruiz's running was, how unselfish Olmo's running was, kind of thing, and that kept on causing problems. Kept on pulling one of um France's DMs away with them, and just kept on creating space for someone, anyone. Nacho stepped into midfield quite a few times, driving with the ball, kind of thing. Shit that he's not renowned for because the space is there because of the unselfish running. It's given. It's actually given space. It's actually given space, and it's causing France, causing France problems. Now, I think I genuinely think France left something on the, in the tank basically today, oh, yeah. and and that frustrates me because Spain after they got the two goals basically they totaled up, and I feel like that's that's probably a a hallmark of De La Fuente. The only thing, the only difference is today, and when we talk talk about the end of the game, we'll get to it, but. He learned from the Germany game and he kept his two game changers on the pitch this time. Um, but generally speaking, France could have and should have had them because Spain, I feel like after their goals, you know, they, they had a flurry and it was great. They didn't have they didn't have any other solutions to hurt them other than the fact that let's try and win the ball and hit them and hit the channels. That was it basically. I mean, Spain scored from their only two shots on target. Yeah. That's it. That's all they yeah. did. I thought, you know, on the balance of possession and chances France were the better team in this game if yeah. unfortunately for Mbappe the entire tournament I mean remember remember the first game he played and he missed that chance and we're like whoa like what the yeah. hell is this was it against who was it against Poland Hungary somebody I yeah. don't know it was it was bread and butter for him like it was basically a one-on-one with the goalkeeper he puts it wide and from that point on his finishing has just been off because today yeah. he had a chance he probably he at least got on target he punted it into the sky uh, mm-hmm. Theo Hernandez had a similar chance. Mm-hmm. Griezmann had a header. Upamecano had a header. Chouameni had a header. They cr- throughout this tournament, I'm looking at the stat. They created 9.44 non-penalty xG and scored mm-hmm. one goal, and it was the Colomani goal today. Yeah. You know, so despite all the criticism of Deschamps, at the end of the day, he 
platform the right people mm -hmm. and they created more than enough. They dominated games, they controlled games, and they created more than enough chances to actually go ahead and maybe not win the tournament, but at least score more goals. But yeah. I don't think he made errors today. Um, one is Rabio, the selection. I know that it's yeah. something he's always going to do. I don't, I don't know why that's the case. It might be a quota thing in France where we got to have this number of crackers on the field type shit. I don't know. But he got Rabio on there. That was a mistake. That was a mistake. Kamavinga should have played. Um, yeah. I thought that when Griezmann came on, um, well, Kante should not have come off because he was good while he was on the pitch. Then when um, Giroud came on and they switched to the 4-4-2, they basically gave the, they gave the initiative to Spain at that stage because mm -hmm. Spain could then outnumber them in midfield and just hold the ball for the rest of the game because when France really needed to be peppering the goal to try to get that equalizer, they weren't creating a whole lot. No. Besides those two first the first two chances I mentioned the Mbappe shot that went high and the Terry Hernandez shot that went high as well because he leaned back um, but for the most part I don't have a lot of I mean these are this is all hindsight stuff I don't have a lot of criticism of Deschamps I thought he did well today again De La Fuente big credit to him I'm glad you mentioned that it's good to see a manager learn from his prior mistakes because mm -hmm. in, in a lot of ways it got lucky against Germany I thought Germany yeah. were going to come back and take that game whether it was on penalties but you know they were going to take that game because he took off his best, his threats, the place who was platforming. The yeah. day he left them on, you know, even though it was a yeah. school for Lamine Yamal, he made him, he made him work overtime, you know. So, yeah. I mean, good on them. Good on them. And um, a word for Rodri as well. I think, you know, it, his excellence. Fuck you, man. Fuck <laughs> I know, you, man. I know, I know. I know. But I think in the, in the periods where Spain looked like they were a little rattled, mm -hmm. he was the one that wasn't rattled. When Fabian Ruiz was giving the ball away in their own box, being a little too, I'm, I'm Spanish. I'm a midfielder. I have great touch. Roger was the one cleaning that shit up, you know. Yeah. So, you know, credit to that scumbag for never losing games. Um, he, he definitely, uh, he, wa he was amazing tonight, honestly. Mm. Like, you know, he was amazing in the very quiet way that defensive midfielders tend to be, you know. So there's you know, not that to say about it, but he was great. You know what else impressed me? Mikel Moreno. I mean, I think he's impressed you all tournament. I've liked Mikel Moreno a lot. So, fair play to him. But he's, um, but, but I, tell you what, I, I tell you what, he's, he's, he's the typical sort of, if you're looking at, you know, I was actually thinking a lot about Spain, the Spain squad, but he's a typical sort of prime 2010 Spain midfielder of that level where you'd ask yourself, how does this guy not get any caps kind of thing? Like, he's in that mould for this squad. But then you look at this current Spain midfield and look at how good they are. Not a single one of those gets, in, not even Rodri gets into the, the prime Spain team. They don't. No. They don't. Like, I saw someone today say that, um, Rodri's better than Busquets. He just isn't. He might carry a bigger goal for it. He might carry a bigger goal for it, but he, he just isn't better than Busquets at football. There just yeah, there shouldn't be it shouldn't be a discussion. That's there's true. very few mid there's very few defensive midfielders that we've seen before our time, during our time, and after our time that we better than Busquets. And simple, that's all I'm gonna say. And nobody's better than Busquets, honestly. Nobody's and, better and, than Busquets. And I, I genuinely hold the opinion that Busquets at a different club probably plays slightly higher up. Not saying he's a, as attacking midfielder or whatever, but he, he's not the deepest midfielder because of how good he is receiving the ball under pressure. Could you imagine someone Busquets in a higher position receiving the ball like in a half space and just turning out of pressure of three players and he's got all the time in the world now to pick, you know, give it to give it to someone who is going to score basically. Like he's he's that good. It's just that unfortunately, not unfortunately, but he played with Xavi and Iniesta, who are just. They're the champion in this year, basically. And it's not a slight on Rodri. Rodri is, ob is obviously fantastic. But, you know, they'll say, oh, he's more versatile. No, Busquets played centre-back quite a lot for, for Barcelona as well. Like, he... Yeah. he, he so, there is... There's, 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 to me, there's no competition to be had. I don't think... Not a single one of these Spain midfielders get into that... Get into that 2008, 2010, 2014. They just don't. I will say for... In, in Rodri's defense, and to give him a little more credit, yeah. that he had or he has that quality. It's not yeah. just about final threat or whatever. It's about yeah. picking the moments in the game to pick your team up and be like, yeah. you know what? Fuck it, I'll do it myself. Yeah. Like, Busquets never really had to do that because he yeah. played with so many wonderful players. He just yeah. did his job and he did it. And that's the primary job. That's the main job description. And when it comes to that main job description, nobody's touching him. Not no, Rodri, man. not. Declan Rice, not nobody. He, yeah. He's the best of that ilk, I would say. Easily. Yeah. One thing, Dom, before we head out, 
Mbappe has a lot of good self-awareness. Um, he said, in football, you're good or you're not good. I wasn't good. My year was a failure. I want to be European champion. I will now go on holiday. I'll rest well. It will do me a lot of good. Then I'll get ready to start a new life. There's a lot to do. So good for you, Mbappe. I'm glad yeah. that you're aware. Yeah, but do, do, do you know what, though? I just, I feel like Mbappe himself, um, how old is he now, 25? Mbappe's no. done, he's 25. 26. He's 20, a year. 26, going on 27. No, he can't be 26, because, no, I'm pretty he, sure he's, he's a 20, whole, He's 25, about to be 26, yeah. Yeah, I'm going to say he's, a, he's definitely a whole year younger than Rashford. I do remember that. But, yeah. Rash, but sorry, but um, Mbappe at this stage of his career has done a lot. Like, generally, he's done a lot. Like, he's, he's already captain his club. He, so, he's already captain his, well, his club as well, but he's captain his, his country to a semi final of a European Championship kind of thing. Like, and that was, that's, this is after winning a World Cup. This is after, you know, um, winning God knows how many league titles in France. This is after becoming France's top scorer, I believe. He's also top scorer, top scorer, isn't he? That's Giroud. He's still Giroud. Oh, well, he's going he's gonna to do it in the next international friendlies, I'm sure, something, something like that. I don't know. But, um, He's like Mbappe's done loads, and he's done loads for France. To be honest, as well, like you know, something crazy. Go on. Mbappe hasn't had a preseason in like two years. Yeah, yeah, and and I feel like this, and I feel like he probably needs. I probably, I, I think next year there's no, yeah, there's, no there's nothing, there's no international. But they want to do the club. There is still a club World Cup. I think Real Madrid pulled out of that or something. I don't know. They've said they don't want to do it or something like that. Yeah, right. <laughs> but I think, but I generally think with Mbappe, with Mbappe's career so far. It's very easy to be harsh and say, yeah, you should be doing more X, Y, Z kind of thing. What you've done at 25, most people will not accomplish in a 15 to 20 year career. They just won't. He has nothing left to prove. He just needs yeah. to win the Champions League and he probably will. And that's it. And, and, yeah. and that's it. And that's it, Kami. So I feel like we need to just pump our brakes a little bit and just be like, hold on a second. This is a generational talent who has probably about another eight years left of his prime gone. That said, I'm glad you said all that. And yeah. good for Mbappe. I'm very pleased for him. I'm very happy for him. Yeah. He has entertained me greatly over the last eight years or so since he showed up. But I'm very comfortable in stating that there are quite a few, you know, because it felt for a minute as if, okay, he's either going to be him and Haaland or he's going to pull away from everybody because he's just better yeah. at football as opposed to just finishing chances. Yeah. I genuinely feel as if in another two to three years, we're not going to be talking about him as the best player in the world. Yeah, I'm not, I mean, I'm not I, gonna. I have candidates in my head already. I'm not gonna yeah. mention them yet, but I feel as if people are gonna lap him. Hmm. Well, I have a question for like this. For like this. The, 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 one of the major things I think that could probably help that happen is him potentially just not got carrying on on the carrying carrying on on the trajectory that he that he's on. If he doesn't, then I can see it happening. But I just feel like he's he's too much of a psychopath to to look at guys. That are back currently behind him and allow and allow that to happen. I don't for some I don't I don't feel like he's comfortable in that regard. Like he idolizes Ronaldo, man. Like he's gonna it's keep not, going for as long as he can. It's not so much about comfort, it's about the fact that I think about okay, I'll just go ahead and say it. I think about someone like Bukayo Saka. Hmm. What accommodation does his man do his managers have to make for him to help him play better? That's, None. I feel that's like, the answer. That's the answer. What accommodations do coaches make for Mbappe? Well, is there a reason like why we've been seeing Rabio as a left winger for years for France? Is well, there a reason why Luis Enrique was doing all this passive aggressive shit with Mbappe this season? That stuff you know matters, what? is my point. I think before it, it coming, for him, he needs it to matters. work harder, is my point. Mbappe needs to work harder. I, like he's done a lot and he's a legend already. But if he doesn't step up his work, there are people that are going to lap him because there are people uh, out there working harder than him that are just as talented. They just haven't been platformed the way he's been platformed yet. I don't think I, I don't think I don't think that's an invalid point, but I'll be honest and say that I don't think there's probably anyone in the world right now that's as talented as, as Mbappe, as good as everybody else is. Vinny, Saka, whoever else, kind of thing. I I still think there's a there's an obvious gap between him and hey, everybody. Man, you know what they Just say, me. man. You know what they say. Hey, uh, I don't, hard work. Hard, hard work beat talent. talent. When talent yeah. don't work hard, you know. And I'm not saying he doesn't work hard. I'm just saying he probably needs to work a little harder to keep that gap going. And like you said, he's a psychopath that has. I mean, and get, you you mentioned Ronaldo being his um his uh, role model or whatever. Guess who Bukayo Saka's yeah. role model is? 
Yeah, we know. We know. Yeah, we know. There you go. You know, you know so I'm just saying, like, there's there's fun stuff to talk about in two to three years, but we can't wait on that. We can't wait on that. I got two things to say before we get out of here. First thing is, and I've noticed this throughout this tournament, you're not going to win shit club or international level without a good number six. That's mm. just point blank, period. Number two, I have a question for you guys. Mm. And this is, gonna, this is how we end this shit. How do you guys think Zidane, if Zidane got the job, do you think it would be a lot different? Because I'm seeing people saying that he's dissimilar to like Deschamps and like his, like the way he plays. Well, how do you guys think France would be if they had Zidane? You can take this one. Actually. I, I, I mean, we'd have to see it. This is all hypotheticals, obviously, but I think the best way to think of Zidane in charge of France would be to think to yourself, how would Carlo Ancelotti coach France? And I think I think that's how Zidane would do it. They're very, to me, they're very similar managers. They've coached the same club and won the, some of the same trophies. And it wasn't very; those wins were not very dissimilar from each other. You know, the mm. the the, the, juju, the juju was there. The last minute wins, all that shit. You know, so I think it would be very much like watching Ancelotti co- coaching Francis. I, I think I, I think I think the within. I feel like, funnily enough, even though Zidane is already sort of clocked and lacks club football already, even though he's done it at the biggest club in the world. I feel like his coaching style probably lends better to international f- football anyway, um, which is quite scary because France, f- the team that France are taking to the Olympics, coached by Zidane, for example, could probably hurt a lot of teams in the World Cup. Bro, bro, the team they're taking, to that under-23 team, that squad, yeah. I genuinely feel as if they could get out of a group in the Euros. Right yeah, now. Oh, for sure. For sure. Right. Like, that, they, they, that team is better than Romania. That team is better it, than Albania. Better than Georgia. Better than... Bro, listen. They got Bradley Loco as their left back. Luka, you know Castillo Luka Bayo plays at Le- Leipzig? Yep. That's the one that's on the backs. They got Desire Duzu- Due. They have... They can release Manu Kone. Akuche, who plays Sharky, at uh, Monaco. Sharky as well. Sharky. Mateta, and, Mateta is there as well. And, and uh, Arnaud Colomendo. So it's just like... It's a fuck ton of talent, bro. Yeah. <laughs> and Thierry Henry's going to have so much fun. I will say though, I cannot forgive France though because I have a com- confession to make, guys. Um, Union Jack gave me a call. We had we had a, we had a talk with each other. Oh it's God, Union back. Jack is back, and he said to me, <laughs> he, said, he, "He said to me that if if those paella eating cunts think about even winning this these Euros, it's me that's going to get it." So. I've spoken to my tailor, and he's gonna make me an agbada, but with the King jo- um, Saint George's flag. Basically, I have, yeah, yeah. I have, I have, I have found my English roots again, guys. <laughs> um, I haven't he's no longer, country. guys. He's no longer coach. He's now a Sofia. <laughs> yeah, I, I, I have not. Lo- I have not loved this country this much since Euro '96, guys. I am fully back, and it's and it's and it's all fuel, fueled by my hate for Spain. I'll oh, be honest with you. Yo, guys. coach, can yeah. I tell you something that just happened Go on. to me? I just randomly saw a British passport in my room. Oh, I'm, can, can you feel that freedom? Can you feel that freedom and fascism as well? Can you feel that? I can feel it. I can. Yo. I can feel it. Yo, before we leave, I wanted to ask was, one was more that, question. Was that about <laughs> What's it? One more question about France, the future of France. Who do you think is more likely to be the next French manager? Zinedine Zidane or Thierry Henry? Zidane. I'm not going to say it's a full-grown conclusion, you know. Not I yet. am. Because, because, Zidane, because Zidane is their demigod, if you like. like Zidane is Zidane kind of thing. Henri isn't that far behind him. No. Like, he generally is, he's, not, he's not that far behind him. But and, Zidane, we, we know that it's, it's Zidane and then, like, if you like, everyone else or whatever, right? But... Henri is probably next up right after him. So I don't feel as if, you know, the French Federation will think, oh, it'll be, if we can't get Zidane, you know, who are we going to get? Oh, he'll just get Henri instead kind of thing. Because... Just promote him. He's already coaching the 23. Yeah, do you know what I'm saying? So, so, so I think, I think that's not, a, that's, yeah, I wouldn't head my bets on anyone, to be honest. Like, that's, that's it. To be honest, that's a job Thierry Henri would love to have. Because yeah. he can tell guys, that he can tell Mbappé, why can't you do this kind of thing? No, but Mbappe probably could fucking do it. So. <laughs> here's the thing, though, right? And before we leave, if Thierry Henry was the France coach, you know what I would like to see? I just want to see them in training. Oh. 
I just want to see the training videos. I want to see Thierry Henry because I know I know he still practices hard. I, I know, know he's still I, does. I need to see him pin some Eba pulls. I need I need to see that. Because I know Thierry Henry, I remember I was that video he had with Michael Richards where Michael Richards they worked out and Michael almost died. I was like, Yeah, Thierry probably still goes extremely hard, like on the pitch. So yeah, you know what, Dean? That was a great question. Cause now I'm thinking about it. Thierry Henry with his friend squad. Maybe Kolomani can actually be a good footballer for once. No, you can't say you can't save Kolomani. You can't save him. Fuck that question I asked is great, motherfucker. I'm the fucking Zidane of this pod, nigga. Get the fuck out of here. You got the same hair. Ladies and gentlemen. <laughs> <laughs> thank you so much for listening coach you got anything you want to add before we get out of here like subscribe all that good stuff um yeah um keep sharing guys honestly youtube comments are fucking hilarious man they they keep me laughing man for real um yeah just yeah share the pod man and yeah um announcement coming very soon for, for you guys we promise yeah so that's it for myself Tosin, dean coach and, and i we're out peace everyone peace take a shot take a shot Oh, 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 oh.